Welcome to Book Time with Ryan. I am Ryan, and today I'll be talking about Herman Melville's Journal of a Visit to London and the Continent, 1849 to 1850. I am wearing an English jersey. It's Liverpool, but close enough. And this was edited by Eleanor Melville Metcalf, who was Herman Melville's granddaughter, and it was published by the Harvard University Press. Not sure if I can show you this without it having too much of a reflection. This book's from 1948, and it is the journal that Herman Melville kept when he went to London in 1849 and returned to the United States in 1850. He also went to a few countries in Europe, and he was going for himself, but he also was trying to drum up some business for his book White Jacket, which I've done a review for, so check that out. Uh, but he's also, he was taking some personal time. So I like this a lot. I am planning to go to London. I read this so I can kind of have a mini Herman Melville pilgrimage when I go to London, and I wanted to see where he was and what he did. The thing is, this was written in uh, 1849, so some of these things are not there anymore. Some of them may have different names. I found that if you look for Queen hotel queen's hotel uh, you get a lot of results so obviously that is not a great thing to search for uh probably anything with royal or queen is gonna end up with a lot of google search results but i did find a few places there's a place called miter i think now when i looked it up it's ye miter ye old miter something like that and it's a pub or a tavern and the difference old really old because this is where herman Melville ate a few times while he was in london and um, which he talks about and he, i think he even talks about what he had so i'm i'm gonna plan on going there and when i go there i want to have the same kind of food if they still offer that kind of food uh that he had and the cool thing is this thing's been around forever and the story is that queen elizabeth the first one danced around a tree there and and now there's still a, there's a stump of the tree that she danced around but that's how old this this is i mean it is incredibly old and it's always cool to see that kind of history because when you're in the united states i mean there are native histories obviously to go further back but as far as like the country itself um it's pretty new so you're going to eat at bars or taverns or pubs or whatever you want to call them that are older than our country that's neat there was also a place called i think blue posts and i need to see if that is still in existence but i think that's an, they kept saying punch and i don't know what punch is but they were having punch um i don't know it's a long time ago so who knows what they meant for punch uh, also there's a place called Adelph adelphi and I don't know, I, I, I looked it up and there is still an Adelphi near where Herman Melville stayed. And he stayed at 25 Craven Street Strand and on, I guess, the top floor. That is a rental, but it's like you rent the entire unit because I think it would have been cool to stay there. Uh, and they just redid it so it doesn't look old or anything. But when I looked up where he stayed, there's an Adelphi that's near there that's a theater. And he had dinner there a number of times. So I don't know if there's a, a restaurant component of that. or You know, it's really hard to figure out 150 years later what is you know, 173, 173 years later uh, what is still there and, and and has been there since that time and what is named something but may have almost been like a rebirth of whatever that was it, you know I'm, I'm sure there are places that take on the name of a prior business just to kind of capitalize on that so i don't know but the adelphi that i found is very close to where her melville would have been walking for you know morning breakfast or something he also went to portsmouth and saw the hms uh, victory which was nelson's ship and i kind of want to do that it's about an hour and 40 or an hour and 50 minute train ride down from london out of the waterloo station 
And the Waterloo Station is the station that Herman Melville used. So that'd be kind of cool too. It was just, it was neat to see. It, it was corrected in some ways. Eleanor Melville Metcalf kind of was one of the, the major forces in keeping her, her grandfather's stuff and continuing his legacy through the years where he wasn't popular. So it's it's pretty cool to see something that he wrote. And there are uh, some pictures in here of pages uh, from his journal. But also her commentary in the back. I believe it's her commentary on the back. Uh, just about some of the things he mentions. Um, I don't know how it was structured. It was a little confusing with the formatting. But there was a lot of interesting information in the back. Just kind of giving more information about references that he made to names or places and what those uh, places or those people were. And he was there for a while. And then right at the end of uh, 1849, he jumped on a packet ship and headed back to the United States. He was missing his son and his wife. And that shows through in, in some of the entries in here too. So it was, it was cool. It was very cool. And it made me, I think I'm probably going to bring this when I go to London, bring this with me and refer to it just to make sure I'm hitting the right places. But I've kind of talked about it. I'm hoping to see not only where Herman Melville was and some of the things he did, uh, including the Royal Natural History Museum, but also I'm hoping to see and hold a first edition, first printing of the U.S. version of Moby Dick, which would be really neat. It's a $55,000 book. I'm not going to be buying it. But to be able to just see it would be cool. So short, short review. I give it five stars because it's just it's historic. He's funny in it. There's there are some funny moments in here. Um he can't remember people's names, so he's like, uh Madame Bl or Baroness de la I don't remember her name. So I like I like that approach. So there's some funny you kind of get it when you're reading anything that I've read of his so far, there are there's some dry humor in it. And that comes through this, too. And this is a very real, it's his personal journal, so it's a very real kind of look, I think, at, at who Herman Melo was early in his life. And this is before before um, Moby Dick, because Moby Dick was written in 1850 and published in 1851. But uh, it's still a look at and who I think Herman Melville truly was. So very cool for me to read, and I'm hoping that I can go to London and then use this to generate some plans for what I'm going to do in London. And if that works out, if all that works out, I'm planning on filming some of that too. So I'll probably have some kind of like Herman Melville pilgrimage video, maybe, uh, for this channel at some point in the future. So we'll see. But other than that, I liked it. It's just another thing for me to know about her in Melville. And I guess go Liverpool. This is Darwin Nunez's jersey. Uh, he was a former Penny Roll player. Penny Roll is my favorite team, my favorite soccer team, period. But uh, they're a Uruguayan soccer club. And I met him when he was playing for Penny Roll. So now he's, he's a highly paid player at Liverpool. And that's why I have the jersey at Darwin's number. All right, have a good one. Bye. No one needs anyone. They don't even just pretend. Jonas and the I'm afraid of a man.